What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here at the Nerd Castle with the next episode of our Nompton Nomoria playthrough. In the previous episode we had done some stuff and some things, I don't know, Nomoria has been like really crashy with me lately, and I know it sounds like really, really, I realize it sounds like more than a coincidence, but no, seriously, it has been. It hasn't been patched or anything either, I don't know, I think it's my fraps. I've really gotta just like come up with a new solution. It's been doing it with all my games lately, and that's why I don't trust it anymore. And so, I've got Codex and I've got a couple other recorders, I've just gotta get them set up and it's just one of those things where I'm lazy. That's what it comes down to. When I get done at the end of the day, I'm like, well, I finished rendering. I'm going to sit and play Dynasty Warriors for like 30 minutes before I go to bed. And it's like one of those things where you got to get your relaxation time in. You guys know how that goes. You guys work. Everybody knows that like when you get home, you got to get that relaxation time in. And if you don't get that, you go into the next day feeling unsated. You go into the next day feeling very disenfranchised. I used to have days like that when I worked at the repair shop because I had to get up at like 6 a.m. for work or whatever, 5 a.m. or I don't know. It's been a long time. My memory fails me, but if I didn't get to like play video games or relax or like play a board game or like play D&D or something like every night after work, it was just like I need relaxation time. I have in between episodes, let's see here, customers would come in and be like, so I need this to get done. i like, yeah, I didn't get to play D&D last night, sorry. It's, we all have things we wish we got last night. <laughs> but anyways, I think I found the next iron. It's on the 69 layer gatey, and so I think we need to start getting going to there. Let's go ahead and put in some stirs. And there we are, we'll put those in, and that'll get us down to here, and you can see it's lining this entire area. I think we might have a pretty good, this is it down here as well, although this is coal, so I'm kind of wondering how much iron we're going to get out of it. We may not get a ton, but I'm still going to try, because we need more. I mean, I think we're down to maybe 25 iron right now. I'm trying to make iron mining tools at the moment, so that these, I'm sorry, I'm trying to make steel mining tools at the moment, so these jobs will go a little bit quicker, and so that we can spend less time staring at the Underdark, because I really do feel like we spend a lot of time underground. But then again, it is a game about digging and mining and whatnot. I am going to mine out all this lead over here for decorative purposes later on. Haven't done it just yet, but I will. What happened? Did he get tired before he got came all the way down the stairs? He's like, nope, that's enough exercise for me today. That is one too many calories burned. I'm going back up to the bar. Who wants some wine? <laughs> he was done with his day. 100% done. And now somebody else is going to come along and do the job. Kind of sucks to be you, but you know what? Maybe the other guy was the smart one, just bailing out and getting his drink on. I think I'm going to clear this out just slightly. And then this layer, we're actually already here. So I am going to dig around kind of carefully. I don't know. I may just kind of whack away at the walls promiscuously. There we go. We'll just start whacking on things, and hopefully it comes out the way we want it to. I don't think I want that to be mined. However, we do want to be very, very careful about the fact that there is a light radius problem down here. So we had golems come in and kind of raid and pillage everybody before. Viking golems that decided to obliterate us. And so we need to make sure that doesn't happen again. Because at the moment, we are actually really, really taxed with regard to manpower. We've lost, I think, six or seven gnomes in the last five episodes. And we only got one as a replacement from our last group of nomads, which was just like, oh, thank you for that, Nomoria. Thank you so very, very much for loving and caring me like you do, or loving and caring for me like you do. And you're like, I don't love and care about you at all. I'm an inanimate program. <laughs> I'm like, well, that aside, thank you. I mean, I'm, you realize I'm trying to be facetious. I'm like, I don't know what facetious means. I can't even spell it. I'm like, okay, fine. Well, I'm being, I'm being grumpy pants. There we go. And that's coal, unfortunately. I thought that was going to be iron. Shows me for not taking a look. Either way, the coal is useful. It means we don't have to burn up a whole bunch of logs in order to do our next mining project. But as you can see, I'm really kind of hoping we can get some steel tools so this will just go really fast and be like, ng -ng 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 -ng. they'll do like the Woody Woodpecker routine and just bash, I guess in this case, it would be like a Stony Stonepecker routine. I guess, God. <laughs> if your last name was Stonepecker, I think you would have some serious family history to explain. Some very serious, fa I mean, Woodpecker works out too. You would still have to explain if your last name was Woodpecker. But Stonepecker, even more so, I'd be like, well. Honestly, I'm not even sure I want you to explain this right now. I'm just going to fill it in with my imagination, and we're going to try and still be friends without this getting awkward. I am surprised they haven't hit the iron vein yet. So, maybe it runs like this? Ew. I was hoping that this would run down this way, like so, and it would be a big old stringer. And it's looking like we didn't get lucky like that. And so, I think that leaves us at a spot where we do need to come up with you know, cast iron solutions to this problem that we're coming up with, and I'm not trying to be punny right there, but we really do need to come up with like a real solution for finding some more iron. If I have to mine this out of the walls right here, and then put in walls to cover up the gaps, well then that's just what we'll have to do, because 
we're really, really low on iron at the moment. Hopefully the builders will get down here and they will keep our miners from being obliterated by large stony enemies. And once that's all taken care of, I do on the top tier, I have already scheduled all the steel pickaxes and things to be made. They just haven't been made yet. Looks like we had the unfortunate circumstance of hitting some gemstones down here. Which I say unfortunate because it really slows down the mining process. Oh, is that... Wait, what is that? Hold on, oh, it's lead? Why did it take him so long to iron out lead? Or to mine out lead? That's weird. They're both using bronze pickaxes. It's okay. Like, I'm going to use a ton of this lead right here. I'm not actually upset about finding lead. Some metals I'm upset about when I find that. I'm like, well, damn, I don't really need that right now. When I find lead, I'm not so grumpy because we can turn that into lead plates and then we can just kind of pave our entire society with them and make everything look cool and robotic and futuristic. I believe I need to... I'm scared to, like, leave this locality would be the first thing that I would have to confess to is that I'm afraid to go back up to the top because every time I leave my gnomes unsupervised, something just horribly stupid happens and I realize it's my fault. That's the thing that you always have to follow up with with your gnomes and be like, yeah, it was my fault because I didn't babysit them enough, but still, every now and again, you wish they would do something intelligent. I guess that's part of living with a bunch of kinder. I think what I'd want to do... Oh, that's just not enough right there. That's bad. That's really bad. That's coal right there, so that's not going to be useful to us. This, however, is iron, and so we have to go over here. Is this iron? Let's find out. That's coal. Damn, why is there so much coal? This is just... This map was not well designed. This one right here, I mean, it wasn't designed at all. A level generator made it, which explains why it's got so many inefficiencies, but... It's like, damn, I've never had this much trouble finding iron before, ever. I've played this game, like, loads and loads of playthroughs. Never had this problem with iron before. And so... I think this is kind of the first time that I've ever had to wrestle with the real fact that I simply just don't have the things I need to get the jobs done that I have. So I guess what we'll do... And this is going to take some creative mining in here, and I'm going to have to do it by little tiny strokes, unfortunately, which doesn't make me happy. Let's go... We'll try for all this down here. I mean, this iron is really... If this is all that's there, it's very, very strange, first and foremost. It's rare that you see little tiny stringers like this that have nothing attached to them. Usually they flow on to other locations from their starting origin, but you can never tell. I mean, sometimes you do get weird outliers in the equation where sometimes you just don't get that useful stringer. God. Is the iron mixed in with the coal? Like, what is going on here? Wow. Okay, well, I mean, I don't even really know what else to say about it. I think I need a torch, like, right here. I'm getting that feeling, and I'm feeling a sneeze coming on. There we go. I sneeze, but you won't hear it because I edit. And allergy season is absolutely 100% here, and it's like I, I go through a persistent state of just laryngitis or something after allergy season gets here. It sucks. It's absolutely, it's like a month and a half of just misery for me. And it doesn't matter how much cetrazine I ingest, it doesn't matter how much loratadine I ingest. It's just like, it's always just a constant state of misery. I'll show you what the ground looks like right outside my apartment complex. I'll put the picture up on Facebook. And you can actually see how much pollen is laying on the ground right now. It's absolutely disgusting. It's brutal. It's, it's, if you were an allergy, it would be the most metal picture you could ever see. It would be like the ogresh.com of allergies. It's bad. And so... There we go, we'll put that right there, and yeah, bad luck. I thought that the 69 was really going to dig us out of here right now, and that was unfortunately not the case. I've really got to kind of think about what I want to do now, because... They should also, like, make coal not look like iron. Like, it's really almost indistinguishable. I think that's slightly lighter, but still... They should make the, the coal should be like... I'm sorry, the iron should be like reddish, because it oxidizes. Anything with iron oxides in it is going to be bright red. Just like anything with sulfides in it or sulfates is going to be yellow. Anything with, you know, copper in it tends to be kind of greenish laying around on the ground. You get an eye for it. Once you've been a geologist for a while, you'll actually see that stuff when you're walking through topography. You'll be walking up a mountain. You'll be like, well, that, that green area right there, you see that how it gets kind of like a green hue over there? And most people will be like, no, it still looks orange to me. I'm like, well, it looks more green than the rest of the orange, which sounds like a weird thing to say to somebody, but... <laughs> Something is greenish orange, you're like, oh, well, there's going to be copper up there, so we should go take a look, because we got to get that money. But anyways, I think 
where I want to go now, I, I don't know. There's iron right there, very clearly, on the next floor down. But I feel like I'm always making you guys promises that I never keep, where it's just like, well, the next floor down. Well, the next floor down. Well, the next floor down. Maybe we'll hit it. But this is the problem of our times, unfortunately. Sometimes you hit these kind of game-ending points where there's nothing I can do until I get more iron. We've actually tapped it all out. We're out of iron right now on the top floor, so I can't finish anybody else's armor. And since the enemies are now coming in iron, it means we are very, very beholden, or at least it does behoove us to make sure that we get a bunch of iron going too. And have they actually gotten around to making any of the stuff that I asked them to make yet? So there's the lead warhammer head that I told them to make back in whenever. I suppose I should sit down right here, and we'll go to that right there. We'll make it out of birch, and it'll be a lead warhammer. There we are. And so that'll be something to replace what Bert has right there. Bert is actually not completely armored. He can end up losing an arm or a leg in any of the battles that are coming up. Hopefully somebody defends him. I know that his hammer skills are going up pretty quickly. Yeah, he's already at 42 hammer, and it's only been like four days. He's training up really, really rapidly, given the expertise of all of his comrades, but let's say that an invasion came right now when half our team was sleeping. Bert would be dead as hell. I would be willing to bet that Clobbles would survive perfectly fine, but Bert would be toast. He would be definitely an unbuttered toast, too, which is the worst kind of toast. That's the dry toast that nobody wants. It's toast without butter. Like, how can you even... How can you even entertain such a food? I mean, I prefer my toast to just be slathered in the shit. It just has to be everywhere. Just like, nah, you know what? I'll have a little bit of toast with my butter. Thank you. But I'm going to put in walls now. Let's go ahead and go to the terrain menu. And we'll put in just like, actually, the best way to do this is just any stone. Because it'll go faster. They'll pick it up off the ground. I'm going to go terrain. And we'll go wall. Any stone. And I realize there's no ramp up for them to get to me. From the bottom layers right here, but I'd still rather not take the chance. I'd rather just be safe than sorry. That's always my little bit of argument with Nomori's. You should always be safe instead of sorry, because the game will make you very sorry that one time you kind of mess up. And I almost said something different right there, but it's okay. I'm gonna. <laughs> we're just gonna address it and move forward. I'm gonna try and find some more lead over here. I don't think lead armor is actually any good. I've looked at the stats before. I don't think lead armor, I think lead armor does something, but I can't remember quite what. It has some benefit, but not very much. And so what you'll see down here, the reason I said any stone is because they'll just pick it up off the ground now and put it in the slot. It makes the job go quicker. So if you tell them to use just marble, they have to run all the way over to here, bare minimum to go get it. If you say any stone, they just pop in and out, left and right, and kind of just grab whatever they need. The sun is set. We're on our sixth day of winter. I can't wait for winter to be done. I always feel like winter is a really kind of humdrum part of this game because nothing's really occurring. There's no harvesting to be done. Over here, we should be able to get ourselves another fistful of lead. And if we can't get the fistful of lead, we'll at least get some more gemstones, which is nice because I do still have that job queued up on the top floor where I've just got them cutting gems all day every day. And we'll turn those into necklaces and things of that nature to make our lives a little bit more easy when it comes to... Putting down the DACA with the traders, or putting down the monetary DACA, the financial DACA. That's the type of DACA very, very different than the one that we're typically used to dispensing, but financial DACA is equally as important. I'm going to allow that job to be worked on for a minute. Let me go and track down those steel pickaxe heads and make sure that something has happened with those, because as it stands right now, I don't even know where the job is getting done, honestly. So we've got pickaxes laying around right there. Forge. This blacksmith was doing stuff previously, and now it's no longer doing stuff. This one over here. Forge and the blacksmith. Okay, so some of the steel pickaxe heads are done. I just don't know where they're laying right now. Let me turn off the walls. There it is. So there's a couple of steel pickaxe heads. That's good. That's really, really good because I think that should expedite a lot of our work processes. I actually may give steel felling axes to people as well. I love the way your gnomes look once they're in full steel. I don't know what it is about the hue of blue that they decided to choose, and that rhyme was totally unintentional. That was a drive-by rhyme right there that just sort of happened. I had no cerebral knowledge that that was going to occur before I said it. But anyways, that drive-by rhyme all out of the way. I love the way that they look once they're in all blue gear. I do like the way iron looks better just because I like neutral tones, like dark grays and things like that. I think that they look super cool. Every pair of dress pants and every like dress shirt that I have are either black or gray because it's it looks good, man. It looks good. 
I mean, I think I have one green shirt that I wear every now and again. But every time I wear green, it, look, it makes me look like a brutal ginger, like the most brutal ginger ever. For whatever reason, when I wear green, it brings out just the absolute red hue in my hair. And I just look like... I, I look like... I look like, I don't know, Rupert Grint or something. That's the only, like, ginger person that I know to bring up as a reference. I don't know. Not to say there's anything wrong with it. It's just, like, I'd prefer that my hair didn't glow in the sun. Oh, we accidentally found iron. Well, that works out. That and somebody's always got to make some comment about gingers. The second they see you're a redhead, they're like, Well, here come the ginger comments. I'm like, yeah, thank you for that, South Park. I blame you entirely. People ran with that fad, by the way. Funny, funny stuff. Okay, well, at least we got a little bit of iron out of the 67. I'm glad that I didn't totally abandon it. I'm really happy that we decided to go off this way. In fact, it may be worth digging all the way out this way just to see where things come out. But yeah, if I wear anything green, my hair glows. It's it's cray-cray. Gotta be like the only Hawaiian on Earth with glowing red hair. It's the weirdest thing. We're going to put in torches over here just to make sure that we don't get invaded, just like I said in the beginning of the episode. The game is obviously going to auto-save. Until we get a lot of this done... I can't really... They build, they build in such a weird order. That's one thing that I was thinking about before I came into this episode. It's like, you'll tell them to do a big square area, and they won't do any sort of spiral pattern or anything like that. They just kind of dig randomly from one block to the next. And so you can never kind of predict where they're going to be digging. And so when you're putting in torches, you got to wait for the entire job to be done, which then leaves you exposed to invasions for a little bit. At least for half a day, I mean. Let's go back up and make sure that all these steel pickaxes get made, because it's looking like they're all just about done right now. And I think I queued up five of them because we do have a lot of pickaxes. I mean, we have a lot of people that are working down in the depths. We'll say that. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And so that should take care of it. And that's a problem we shall ne'er again have to think about. Which is good. The less problems I have to think about, the better. Because anything that runs through my thought process, it's kind of like running water through a dirty strainer. Everything that comes out the other side is just contaminated, so... I prefer the less things that go through my cerebellum, the happier I'll be. Got a few more gemstones to mine out down here, and I realize this has been another mining-filled episode, but on the plus side, we did find a really good string of iron, and it's reasonably believable that it might be on the layer lower as well, so we might be able to follow this one down, although I can't promise it. I can still hazard a guess. That phrase kind of confuses me because you're hazarding a guess, but like a guess is not a tangible thing that could be at risk or hazarded. I suppose it's just one of those weird turn of phrases which somebody's always like, how do you turn a phrase? Ah, uh, the foundations of humor. Taking say, or taking random sayings and dissecting them and making them sound foolish. That's like 80% of my job on the internet. Just finding random sayings and then flipping them around and just being like, oh look, this is nonsensical. Even though it made sense in 1750. If you want to do that, if you want to find lots of sayings that are easily dissectable, read Ben Franklin. That's like where you start. Ben Franklin was a hilarious guy. Like, Ben Franklin strikes me as the sort of dude that would totally be doing lines on a Saturday night. The guy was hilarious. I mean, everything I ever read from Ben Franklin, he does have some dry stuff. But every now and again, he puts out a paper like Fart Proudly, or he puts out a paper like a, what was it called? advice to a young man concerning the selection of a mistress or something like that like every now and again he writes an essay that's hilarious it's like the funniest thing ever and even after 300 years the humor still holds through like you can see the satire it's just dripping with it but yeah I've been reading Ben Franklin because it's a great place to get material from because the guy there's a reason there's a reason he's pretty esteemed unlike that ridiculously tentpole boring individual Jefferson no, I just picked somebody at random. I don't know if Jefferson was actually boring. Maybe Jefferson was good at doing the handstand dance with a lampshade on his head. I don't know. I didn't know Jefferson personally. I know nothing about the guy. Okay, I know some stuff about the guy. I'm just saying Ben Franklin seems like he would be the most fun out of all of those guys. Now that we're done with... Well, sort of. I mean, we're not quite there yet. We're working on it. We're working on it here. 
That's like from Doug, I think, when Doug goes to high school, like the later on ABC, not the Nickelodeon Doug, but the ABC Doug, where he goes to high school. Like their school is always partially rebuilt, and there's always dudes like ducking out of the rafters, like, we're working on it. That's what I'm referencing anyways. I don't know how many people watched the high school Doug, but I watched the high school Doug because Doug is my homeboy. I was always down with Doug. I was I was felt like I was a kindred spirit with Doug because nothing ever went right for me in high school and junior high either. I was like, damn. And that's why I hang out with Doug every single day watching cartoons with him and be like, yep, Doug gets me. God, my I'm just itchy. My whole face feels like it's on fire right now, just itchy all over the place. It's like I use bad detergent or something, but no, it's just those trees just having crazy porno sex outside. It's like, you don't need to do this. We're, it's not going to work. They're just going to cut. The groundskeeper is going to come around like tomorrow, and he's going to pull up all of your children out of the ground. And that's going to be that. Oh, good. The goblins attacked while Bert and everybody else. <laughs> okay, so we have major problems right now. Bert may not survive the night. Bert appears to have lost a leg. I was slightly concerned about such a thing occurring. Bert's gonna die. If Bert makes it, I mean, come on, we'll call him Pogo. Yeah, Pogo! That's my guy right there, that's my guy. His new nickname is Pogo. That's his only nickname from now on. Come on, you can do it, Bert. Sir, he picked up what? The goblin picked up Bert's foot. He's beating him with his own left leg, what? No! Oh, insult to injury! He chopped his leg off, and he's trying to beat him to death with his own leg! Oh, don't stand for that, Bert. Beat this fool to death now! Kill this dude! Kill this dude right this second! <laughs> oh, that is not okay. That is not okay, Bertster. Well... Bert can no longer walk. <laughs> oh no! I wonder how that affects his combat efficiency. It can't, it has to do something terrible. There are just so many ogres in this group. We have serious problems right now. Bert's trying to hobble his way back out here, but he's just like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. You can go on without me. Go on without me, guys. Oh my god. A bronze hand axe, or a bronze hand axe has become legendary. Sky clapper. I don't know if... So I don't know if that means that he calls down lightning, or that he literally gave the sky the clap, but either way, I think it's probably a feat that should probably be mentioned, so whatever. I'm not gonna, not gonna think about it too much. I don't know, Bert's probably like, can I go home at this point? I don't think it nerfs his stats or anything, though, not having a leg. We can take a look. Yeah, it doesn't affect his stats whatsoever, so maybe his dodge is still just as good. You might assume for a moment that maybe... Oh, I wonder if he'll try and put on a Grieve if we give him an extra one for... I'm sorry, a boot if he puts on... Oh, his entire leg. Oh, that's what missing means. Okay. So he's missing an entire leg. I, I really hope that someday they put him... Because you're gnomes and you have tinkers and things. I'm hoping that one day they put in something that allows you to craft like robotic legs or something because you can already make like robotic doors and stuff that open with switches. Make robot legs and things so that you can heal up your gnomes later on. I knew that that was going to happen to Bird eventually. The AI actually targets you depending on what you don't have covered. So in case you guys didn't know, like let's say I don't have a boot on, the enemy will swing at my foot over and over and over again until he gets a hit. But anyways, I think I'm going to break off the episode here now that we have a one-legged gnome defending our society. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care out there everybody and hi-do.